Hello kids. So I guess most of you might be very much busy preparing for the upcoming NEET exam, which is uh, scheduled to be like in the next month, right? So uh, most of you might have been studying on and on continuously. Now the major important thing in chemistry is learning and remembering different organic chemistry reactions. Now imagine if there could be a technique wherein you could have something in front of you and uh, like something like a chart or a diagram wherein you have all the reactions coming directly, right? And the most important thing is just imagine if you don't even need to uh, even by heart or anything like that right so we'll be going through a simple exercise today wherein we'll be discussing different functional group interconversions that means conversion of one functional group to another functional group so in this particular session we are going to have a complete overview of organic chemistry reactions the most important ones which you have studied in the past two years that is 11th and 12th standard Okay, so you have studied about alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and then uh, this year you have studied about different compounds like organic hydroxy compounds, then you have haloalkanes, haloarenes, compounds containing nitrogen, right? So today in this one session, you will be going through the entire functional group interconversion that has, uh, that you have been doing it. Mm, so uh, it's going to be a very exhaustive session, so, but it would be very useful to you. Okay, so now let's start with the first one. It's going to be very good mental exercise for you as well. So let's start with the first one. You started with saturated hydrocarbon. So you started with an alkane, right? So I would simply write R, C, H, H, and there is one more C here. There is one more H here, one more H here, and then R, correct? So this is basically an alkane. Correct. So from alkane, what are the different compounds which you could prepare? Just imagine if you remove the two hydrogens, right? So the process is called as cracking. So cracking, you get an alkene. So I'm simply going to write R, C, R, uh, not R here. I'll write H here. So double bond C, there is going to be an R here and then there is going to be an H here. Very, very simple thing, right? From an alkane, if you do the halogenation, okay, so if you do the halogenation, you get a haloalkane, correct? So let me just uh, put this something like this, R, Rx, correct? So halogenation, you have chlorination in presence of UV light, bromination in presence of catalyst, and iodination in presence of HiO3 or mercury oxide, many reactions you have studied, correct? Very, very simple thing. And then, then comes conversion of X to OH by SN reaction. SN, it could be one or two, correct? Then you get ROH. Now, <coughs> now, Conversion of an alkene to alcohol is also possible and this is basically by using hydration of alkene, right? Now hydration of alkene, there are two methods, using dilute H2SO4, which is Markovnikov's effect and then using diborane, which is B2H6, right? So uh, this here you will get branched alcohol and this in this case you will normally get a linear alcohol. Very, very simple thing. Correct? Now, this alcohol on oxidation would give me an aldehyde. Correct? Similarly, this alkene on ozonolysis would also give me an aldehyde. Right? So, this is basically ozonolysis. Aldehyde and ketone depends. So, uh, this alcohol, it could be something like primary, it could be something like secondary, it could be something like tertiary. So, primary would give me an aldehyde, um, primary alcohol gives an aldehyde. Similarly, secondary alcohol, if I have something like secondary alcohol on oxidation would give me a ketone, correct? And both aldehyde and carbon uh, and, and uh, ketone on oxidation, further oxidation would give me carboxylic acid. Correct? So this is very, very simple methodology, simple method. Now through alkyl halide, you could have different other compounds as well. So just imagine if I treat this with uh, maybe something like KCN, right? I get RCN, correct? And if I treat this with maybe NH3, right? What, what would I get? I would get RNH2, that is an amine. Now, cyanides on reduction using tin and HCl, 
would give me a primary amine. Cyanides on very very long arrow this is going to be cyanides on hydrolysis using a mineral acid would give me a carboxylic acid pretty much simple but not that complicated it even though it may not be that simple but it's not that complicated as well now this if i treat it with silver cyanide i would get isocyanide which is r and c now this on hydrolysis right so this on hydrolysis would give me an amine whereas this on reduction would give me R NH CH3 which is a secondary amine correct so this is one uh, so you have amine you have you have cyanide you have isocyanide then you can make a carboxylic acid correct so uh, you could even have one more thing just imagine if you treat alcohol if you treat acid with an alcohol, what is that which you get? Uh, this is nothing but Williamson synthesis, sodium metal. So you have ROR dash, this is nothing but ether. Very, very simple. Now let's come to carboxylic acids. So carboxylic acid, what are the products which you could get? So first of all, carboxylic acid, so uh, aldehydes and ketone on oxidation gives carboxylic acid. So that means if I'm able to reduce, I should get the raw material back. Similarly, aldehydes, um, alcohols on oxidation give aldehyde. That means aldehydes on reduction should give me alcohol. Ketones on reduction should give me a secondary alcohol, correct? very very simple and then um, you have this alcohol alkyl halide to alcohol then alcohol to alkyl halide is also possible we could use pcl3 pcl5 and socl2 anhydrazide zncl2 is also possible correct and uh, what else you have yes so you have cracking giving an alkene and then hydrogenation in presence of nickel catalyst would give me an alkane Pretty much simple to understand. Now just imagine if I do the further cracking, I could give, I could get something like an alkyne. So I would have something like RC triple bond CR. Depend, depends upon what exactly the reactions are, but not that easy and not that feasible as well. So even this on ozonolysis would give me an aldehyde. Right? So this is pretty much... Uh, manageable and pretty much understandable correct and then now we are going to discuss about the derivatives of carboxylic acids carboxylic acids uh, what are the derivatives so carboxylic acid using carboxylic acid if i treat it with pcl5 i can get r c double bond o cl that is acid chloride correct similarly if i treat this with uh, maybe uh, you have something like uh, this is acid chloride right so just if i do the dehydration i get an anhydride anhydride and what is the formula of anhydride r c double bond o o c double bond o r correct and then what ex what else you could have if i treat this with an alcohol i would get an ester so ester is r c double bond o O R dash. So I'm just going to put an R dash over here. Now carboxylic acid, if I treat this with um, ammonia, that is N H3, correct? So I would get R C double bond O N H2. Pretty much simple to understand. And then uh, again, this is reversible. So this on hydrolysis will give me my carboxylic acid back. Right, so uh, I could even have an ester prepared from the anhydride. Anhydride can give me an ester on treatment with an alcohol again. Then acid chloride on treatment with an alcohol would again give me an ester, pretty much simple. And again, this on treatment with an alcohol would give me an ester and ammonia together. Correct. Now I I have one more method wherein I can prepare this. I can convert this amine to uh, amide to primary amine this is nothing but Hoffman bromamide reaction 
Okay, so this is Hoffman bromamide reaction. So this was about the major functional group interconversions which you may need to understand, which you may need to mug up. Mostly if you will see that you will be using all of these reagents for your regular or organic chemistry questions. So these may prove to be pretty much handy and I guess most of you might be able to guess the name of the reagents. You can even extend this like for LD, from aldehyde you can prepare something like, uh, um, I mean, you can do the aldol condensation, alpha, beta, unsaturated ketone, and then amide. From amide, you can do other chemical reactions as well. So this was about the functional group interconversions. I hope you have enjoyed this session um, doing these questions and functional group transformation, and it would be highly helpful in your uh, upcoming NEET exam.